I've been using the M2 MacBook Air since it came out, but recently I decided to switch over to a two-in-one laptop, the new Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, and in this video, I'll tell you the best and worst parts about the switch. But first, let me explain why I switched, because the M2 MacBook Air is a very solid laptop. It has fantastic performance, great battery life. It's also very thin and light, so it's great for bringing it around with me to my different classes and libraries on campus. However, as a student, I often I often want to write things down, like annotating on my lecture slides or assignment handouts, also just writing down notes and drawing diagrams. So I also always brought along an iPad. And so in the back of my mind, I always wanted a two-in-one device so that I only have to bring around one device and it can have everything on it, all of my notes and files, which is definitely easier. But past two-in-one devices have just not really been appealing to me with pretty disappointing battery life. And they're also not nearly as fast as Apple Silicon Mac. However, when the Book 3 Pro 360 came out with its beautiful 3K display, that's OLED and 120 Hz, and on paper, it's just as fast as the M2 MacBook Air. So, I had to try it out. All right, so Samsung definitely made some pretty big improvements on their laptop design this year. Finally, there's a 16 by 10 display that's high res, but actually for the 360 laptops, only the pro version got the new design and the only option for it is 16 inch. So I really hope the smaller non-pro 360 laptop will get this design update soon as well. But 16 inch might not be a bad thing. It has a bigger battery and the bigger screen is nicer to work on compared to the 13 inch screen on the MacBook. But this laptop screen is actually quite impressive. So Samsung ditched the 1080 screen that they used to use. And finally, this thing has a 3K display with a comparable pixel per inch to the MacBook. And I do think this extra sharpness makes a really big difference, especially on text. Here's an older version with a 1080 screen. And if we look at these two side by side, you can see some pretty noticeable color fringing on the older screen. And probably my favorite thing is that it has a new 16 by 10 aspect ratio that I think just works a lot better in both the laptop mode and the tablet mode. Reading docs just feels more comfortable with this taller screen and you can even rotate it and read documents in this vertical mode, which I like to do for long PDFs and it's actually pretty helpful. I also often like to split two windows side by side and this large screen is great for that. I can comfortably write notes on one side and then read another document or watch a video on the other. And there's some pretty good built-in window snapping features. I can use keyboard shortcuts or just by dragging. But there's a lot more about this display, and in my opinion, it convincingly beats out the MacBook Air's display. Because first of all, it's 120 Hz, and everything just feels so much smoother than on a 60 Hz display, especially when you're using it as a tablet and writing on it. Also, it's an OLED screen, so black is truly black and you get better contrast. However, the Galaxy Book isn't as bright at 400 nits peak versus the M2 MacBook Air's 500 nits peak, but this isn't really a noticeable difference. I think the Galaxy Book is perfectly fine for indoor use, even in bright rooms. For outdoor use, especially on bright sunny days, it's not really enough, but neither is the MacBook screen. And to be honest, I don't really expect them to be. However, another problem with the Galaxy Book is that it doesn't have as good of an anti-reflection coating as a MacBook. So it can be kind of annoying if you're in an environment where you can't really control the lights or where you sit, so like a lecture hall. And also when side by side with the MacBook's LCD screen in a moderately lit room, the OLED screen actually looks less impressive because the light reflection washes out a lot of its contrast. But overall, this thing is very well designed. I would say it's very, very thin and light for a 16 inch laptop because unlike most 16 inch laptops, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So it's more like an ultrabook rather than a gaming laptop. And it's actually only about one pound heavier than the 13 inch MacBook Air. So overall, this thing is pretty portable. I actually recently traveled with it and it didn't weigh me down too badly. And it even fit decently well on a small plain tray table and I was able to do work on it. However, this thing is pretty heavy for a tablet because it still has this whole keyboard attached, whereas a traditional tablet doesn't. So if you often hold your tablet to watch things or jot down notes, then this might not be the best. 
But for me, I actually mostly use my tablet just on a table, so the heavier weight doesn't bother me too much. And the Galaxy Book does feel pretty good in the hand. It's the aluminum alloy that Samsung usually uses, and it has a nice matte finish, although it does catch a bit more fingerprints than I would like. However, when I press down on the keyboard, you can see the Samsung has more flexing than the MacBook, but it's not too bad, and if the Samsung material helps to reduce the weight, then I think it's worth it. All right, but one thing that I don't really like is that the hinge is not as solid as the MacBook Air's hinge and probably most other traditional laptops too. When working with it on a desk, it's not really a problem, but if you put it in your lap, it might be slightly annoying because the screen will want to fall backwards. But at least this hinge is super flexible. I can fold it over very easily and quickly, and I find that it holds pretty well in this tent position too. And more about the keyboard. So it doesn't feel as good as the MacBook Air's keyboard. It has less travel, but it definitely doesn't feel bad feels pretty decent to type on. What I don't like more is that there's a numpad, and I personally don't use a numpad. If you do, you might actually like this design, but the numpad just shifts the rest of the keyboard to be off center, and so it just feels slightly awkward when I'm typing. Also, this trackpad uses a diving board design, and so it doesn't click at the top, unlike the MacBook keyboards. I've kind of gotten used to placing my thumbs on the trackpad and then typing with the rest of my fingers. However, with this trackpad, I can't effectively click with my thumb and so it just doesn't feel as good. But this trackpad is very big so at least you have plenty of room. Also the Galaxy Book has a pretty good variety of ports. It even has a USB-A and an HDMI port but it only charges with USB-C and there's two of them both on the left hand side and so it's just slightly inconvenient when I have to swing my cable around the laptop to charge it. Now the speakers are actually at the bottom and they sound okay but I've definitely heard better and one of them is the M2 MacBook Air, even though those speakers aren't super great either. But the Galaxy Book definitely has a more tinny sound. Also, I've noticed that these speakers tend to sound the best when they're firing against something. So when it's against the table or when it's folded over into tablet form. When it's just firing against the air, it actually sounds quite a bit worse. And as for the pen, so I think it has a great shape, it has a flat edge, and it's very easy to grip. And the button is at a location that makes erasing very convenient. And also this S Pen is very light, it's much lighter than the Apple Pencil. And it doesn't need to be charged either, which is great, so you can keep it anywhere. And I actually wouldn't recommend keeping it on the back of the computer because the magnet there is very, very weak, and so it'll probably fall off pretty easily. When I'm traveling or going somewhere, I actually usually store the pen separately. But this pen does track very, very well with no like wiggly artifact, even when drawing a diagonal line very slowly. And this is a big issue with lots of other Windows 2-in-1 devices. On the Galaxy Book, this is by far the best that I've seen on the Windows side, and I would say it's a very close match to the iPad. And honestly, I personally like a lighter pen to write with, and having a button makes it much faster to erase compared to having to double tap on the Apple Pencil. And because this Galaxy Book has a 120Hz display, overall, I think it feels much nicer to write on it than the iPad Air for sure, and only the iPad Pro with its 120Hz screen is comparable to this in terms of the writing experience. Now, another pretty cool thing is that just like the S23 Ultra, the Galaxy Book also has the Air Command menu. It gives you some extra functionalities, such as being able to make a GIF. You can also annotate on screenshots, which I found very useful for both my schoolwork and just other things in life. And also, you can draw and color in the Pen Up app, and on this big screen, it's actually very fun and satisfying. But actually, there's another thing called the pen menu, and it just lets you add a few additional app shortcuts there. Okay, so overall, I've been really enjoying the two-in-one experience with this device. If I want to start annotating a document, I can just flip this thing over, I don't have to go grab a different device, and sometimes also have to transfer files. So that has been a great added convenience, and also you can find lots of great note-taking apps on the Galaxy Book, like Samsung Notes and OneNote. And now there's actually a beta version of Good notes on Windows 2, which is really cool. I actually never use GoodNotes even on the iPad, but recently I decided to try it out on the Galaxy Book and I really, really like it. Too bad I'm graduating soon though. And the pre-installed Samsung Notes is actually really good as well with lots of features. There's a bunch of page templates and you can also change the background color. So far, the screen, the pen, and the overall design of this thing makes it a pretty good two-in-one device. But of course, the performance and battery life are also crucial to the overall 
overall experience. And this time, the 13th gen Intel chip actually beats the base model M2 MacBook Air, but only in terms of the CPU and only when it's plugged in. Now, considering the fan in this thing is screaming the entire time and the MacBook is completely fanless, I wouldn't really call this a big win. And when unplugged, which is probably how the laptop is going to be used most of the time, the performance drops quite a bit, especially for the CPU. It's now 43% slower than the MacBook in single core and 4% worse in multi-core. And this is also the case in the web browsing benchmark speedometer. When plugged in, it barely beats the MacBook when both are using Chrome. And when unplugged, the performance is now 45% worse than the MacBook. I did test both Chrome and Edge on the Galaxy Book and they score pretty much about the same. Whereas on the MacBook, Safari does score significantly higher than Chrome. And in terms of the GPU, so even when it's plugged in, it's 28% slower. And this is against the base model of the M2 Air with two less GPU cores. So if you want to do things that are more graphically heavy, like editing videos, then definitely MacBooks are going to be better for that. Now, when the Galaxy Book is unplugged and on battery, you can actually get some of the performance back by putting it to performance mode in the settings. But this still only gets it to about 14% slower than the MacBook in speedometer. And of course, changing the setting will make the fan run louder and the battery last shorter. So it's definitely a trade-off. And annoyingly, there are actually two separate apps to set this. There's the Windows settings app and the Samsung settings app. I tested both of them and it seems like setting it to performance mode in either app seems to increase the performance. But the one in the Windows settings seems to give a little bit more. But also only the Samsung settings app provides you with a silent mode where the fans do not spin. But for the sake of battery life, I think it makes the most sense to keep it at the default modes, which is balanced and optimized. Because after running a gaming benchmark loop for one hour, the Samsung dropped 47% as opposed to 37% on the MacBook Air. Though in this case, I do think the MacBook Air not having a fan and thermal throttling is saving it some power. But in terms of lighter tasks, such as 4K video playback, in one hour, the Samsung, even with a bigger screen, pulls ahead, dropping only 12% of battery as opposed to 14% on the MacBook. Overall though, in my daily use, I actually find the battery life quite good, even when it's replacing both my laptop and tablet. On most days, it lasts through the entire day without needing to be charged. And also to be fair, in the default balanced and optimized mode, it might just be fast enough that it doesn't get in the way for most tasks. However, I have noticed that when there's a video playing, I do feel more hiccups on the Samsung as opposed to the MacBook Air. Now, when this thing is running heavy things, so like when I was running all the benchmarks on it, the fans do get really loud and it's not great. However, in day-to-day -day use, when I'm just doing light work on it, the fans are actually very reasonable. And so even though I would say I'm pretty sensitive to fan noise, it doesn't actually bother me that much. And while playing a 4K video, the fans in this thing still need to spin, but at least it keeps it reasonably cool to the touch. After running a 20 minute gaming benchmark, the Galaxy Book is actually hotter than the fanless MacBook, which I found pretty surprising. So for most aspects of performance, the Galaxy Book does lose out to the M2 MacBook Air, but one thing that it does beat the MacBook at is the SSD, mostly because the base model Mac only has one storage chip. But of course, in most daily tasks, this doesn't really matter. And lastly, so there were definitely quite a few differences that I felt when switching over from Mac OS to Windows. On the MacBook, I quite liked using these gestures, such as showing all of the open windows in an app and also switching between my desktops. So I was glad that Windows has these helpful features as well. It definitely made navigating this computer feel a lot more familiar. And as for customization, so I didn't do too much customization on this. However, I know that you can definitely do a lot with Rainmeter. And I actually fully customized my PC with Rainmeter and it was really fun and the end result was pretty satisfying. Now, both of these do have a search. There's Windows Search and Spotlight. However, the Windows Search is not as good as Spotlight. I find it much less reliable for finding what I actually want, such as opening up an app. Now, there is a lot more blow apps on Windows. The Samsung laptop isn't actually as bad as many other Windows devices. However, Samsung does come with lots of its own apps pre-installed, but at least it doesn't have too many like random apps, like the antivirus that you didn't ask for and also Candy Crush. But I do prefer how macOS lays out all the apps in the launch pad. I think it makes it easier to find things and it also just looks better. And as for the ecosystem, so the feature that I use the most is transferring things between my devices. The MacBook is obviously going to work the best with other Apple products like iPhone. However, this Samsung laptop is really good at transferring things 
things to other Samsung and Android devices. Quick Share on the Samsung and AirDrop on the MacBook are about the same speed. And one last bonus thing that I just have to tell you guys. So this thing does have a built-in webcam. The quality is all right. It's good enough for meetings and stuff like that, but it has this feature that'll make you make eye contact with the camera. I think it looks funny, but creepy, but pretty unrealistic. I wouldn't use this thing in a serious meeting. Okay, so this Galaxy Book is about the same price as an upspec M2 MacBook Air. However, with this thing, I would say I'm getting most of the capability that I want out of an iPad as well. So it's a pretty good deal. And not to mention, it does have a better display than the MacBook. Now, I don't really like the off center typing position and also the diving board style trackpad, but probably the biggest concern is that this thing is only fast when it's plugged in. But if you can look past those things, then I think this is a great device, especially for students who also want the ability to write things down. The extremely well-performing S Pen and the 120Hz screen makes writing feel really smooth and good, and this OLED screen is really great for just entertainment watching videos too. So yeah, this was my experience switching to the Galaxy Book. I hope you found it helpful and you can watch more here.